Thank you, Nora. Our next speaker is Corey Quinn, who you may know from the snark he delivers in his newsletter, podcast, and of course, Twitter. I found him to be an incredible source of insights, and I'm personally grateful for the help and the critiques he gave me on an early draft of The Unicorn Project. He has a keen eye for the absurd, and there's plenty of that in how organizations are using and misusing the public cloud. He'll be presenting some startling observations on what we tend to do wrong, and he provides some equally startling advice on what we can do about it. Here's Corey. Hi there. I'm Corey Quinn, and I'm the Duckbill Group's Chief Cloud Economist. You might have little to no idea what that means, but that's okay, because I have absolutely no idea what it means. Basically, I took an engineering background and applied it to an expensive business problem that, and this was key, nobody would wake me up about at 3 a.m., the horrifying AWS bill. Four years later, we're about 10 employees, our customers spend billions a year on cloud services, and we have angry opinions backed by data. How'd we get here? Well, I got yelled at a lot when I used to run ops teams about the AWS bill. I wanted someone that I could just give money to and they would make that problem go away. So I couldn't find that person, so I started consulting. Soon, I wound up creating my newsletter, Last Week in AWS, that gathered all the information from Amazon's ecosystem that had an economic impact, which, let's face it, was pretty much everything. And then I shared my idea with Mike Julian, and we partnered to create the Duckbill Group. So we now do AWS cost optimization because it's a growing problem experienced by approximately everybody. And we host three podcasts and write two newsletters covering all things AWS because focusing on something is not really something we're great at. Oh, and our mascot is a venomous platypus named Billy, unless he's doing consulting work. Then he wears a tie and goes by William. That's where you folks come in. I gave a version of this talk a year ago or so at a DevOps Enterprise Summit event back when the pandemic was just getting started. And Gene Kim apparently lost a bet or something because he wanted me to bring the better version of that talk here as a plenary. So this version of the talk is very reasonably called You Suck at Cloud and It's All Your Fault. Just to make sure that we set the proper tone and context for the nonsense I'm about to hit you with. Because everyone feels on some level like everyone else has figured this stuff out. And somehow, we're the ones who are missing the bigger picture that those other companies have managed to get right. I'm sorry, everyone is secretly ashamed of how they're working in the cloud. You're not alone, and it's not really your fault. So get comfortable, let's chat. I'm here to talk to you about the plethora of mistakes we see in the world of managing cloud costs. Now, when I say managing costs, you're probably going to expect a talk that covers points that are a lot like the ones right here, albeit with slightly less inferred violence against your account manager's furry friends. Because this is the usual stuff you'll see in every talk about cloud bills, and they usually end with a rousing call to action, either go forth and tag everything better, or to buy some company's product or service that won't solve your actual problems. If this is the kind of thing you're into, great. Allow me to suggest every single talk about cloud cost optimization that isn't this one. It's always the same tired advice, and it doesn't matter if someone's giving it to you in 2021 or 2012, because it doesn't really change. I consider this proof that all of the advice on this slide doesn't actually work for crap when it comes to achieving outcomes that even slightly resemble lasting change. So if the usual suspects aren't what you should be focusing on, what are the worst mistakes I see companies making around cost? Let's begin, of course, with running Kubernetes. You might chuckle at this and think I'm being intentionally antagonistic or setting up to make some clever point. Rest assured, I'm not. We have a large enterprise client who had their cloud bill divided into Kubernetes and everything else. Kubernetes was a giant expensive question mark. 
It's maybe where real work happened, maybe it was all waste, but nobody had a clue. This is because running Kubernetes is and remains a giant mistake from the bill side of the world. Now, from the perspective of a cloud provider, you can spin up a whole bunch of instances, and then on top of that, run all of your workloads inside of Kubernetes and get yourself into billing hell. And that's because to that provider, you're running a single workload called Kubernetes. There's no visibility at all into what workloads are going on inside of that environment. Scaling your clusters up and down is a ridiculous fantasy that everyone talks about, but effectively nobody actually does because auto scaling is often not worth the expense of implementing it properly and requires you to accurately predict the future. So in the real world of enterprise, Kubernetes looks like a lot of big instances sitting around costing you the same every hour of every day. Then those instances talk to each other in weird ways. In AWS, transferring data from one availability zone to another costs the same as it does to transfer it from one region to another. Two cents in most cases. Kubernetes has no sense of zone affinity, so that weird workload that the cloud providers see, it spends an inordinate amount of time talking to itself, and not in the fun way that I do, and it racks up the bills as you go. Think about that for a second. Something inside of Kubernetes wants to talk to something else, and it'll frequently ignore the thing that's right next door that it can talk to for free, and opt instead to shove a few petabytes a month at something that's charging two cents per gigabyte. Worst of all, you can't attribute those costs.